So, so nice to see all of you. I know it's a very short notice, this webinar, we just decided two days ago. And so nice to see a lot of friends who joined. Um, as always, thank you for all your love and support. So we'll begin um, in a minute. Um, yes, uh, just give me a minute and then we will be able to take care. So that's about it. In the meantime, grab your coffee because this could go dry very soon, obviously. Uh, grab your coffee, be prepared and I will take it through and I'll take my uh, image off quickly. So that's it. Today is, uh, as you know, it's uh, Diwali day as well. So I wish you, your family, everybody, all the good um, health and happiness. I know it's been a, it's been a tough uh, two years for everybody. So uh, as they say, nothing lasts for forever. So uh, please do um, stay healthy. That's the thing. So uh, I think we can begin. Uh, let me switch off my... Uh, so. Uh, this is just a small attempt from uh, okay let me uh, let me go back from the disclaimer obviously we are in the procurement mode so, uh, <clears throat> so the point here is you know this webinar has not been endorsed by crown commercial services or government commercial function etc uh, me and my team thought okay you know team is busy i know there are many live bits that's happening and this landed a week later uh, half term so ccs was kind to release it half week later than half term what that means is um uh the the meeting then goes back uh to just um, go over christmas new year uh, so that's uh that's the thing uh but either way we are where we are um so um, that's the disclaimer so this has not been endorsed by ccs and I, me and my team are doing this voluntarily just to ensure that uh the framework gets uh, as much reach as possible and then all the colleagues who are bidding for this gets as much support as possible even before uh, the tender so that's it. So as I mentioned here, uh, it's most interesting because in 2015, 2018 and today, uh, most of you might have bid this for a different organization or for the same organization, uh, because I looked at the list, um, you know, I think all the pretty much all the tier one bidders are here, um, so which is quite uh, which is quite moving for me because, you know, exactly what you're doing and you, you have been in all the iterations, but for you to take the time to join me and the team here uh, means a lot. So thank you. As it always says, you might have done it for a different organization in the past, but our mission here is just to help you to scale yourself so that you can obviously scale your company. So that's it because, uh, and the reason, uh, you know, Rob was very kind with this message. The reason is, you know, I think there should be a collective consensus in how the industry needs to operate and, and how we need to come together to solve the problem. 35 billion uh, framework, um, largest contract in UK and as, as he told you early on if you haven't decided to bid for it please do bid for it because public sector will go faster than the private sector at least for the next five years so uh, and that's it so uh, yeah there are previous bidders here um, in 2015-18 there are previous framework winners and uh, there are previous call off winners obviously not everybody went on to win it we will also touch this on this and then there are a few uh, current bidders and um, uh, this is what another thing is i've tried to make it simple I, we had 150 slider contest but it was too dry so i just made it like a little notes for you so which uh, which is available um so uh, what we have here is different roles so you could be there are some consultants who have joined in uh, please uh, welcome to listen and uh, if it helps your clients please do and as you know, there are sales directors, bid directors, bid writers, commercial directors. And I think there are even from commercial services in this. If you are, thank you. Thank you for joining as well. So please, if you haven't decided to bid for it, bid for it. But once you bid for it, it's going to be an intense eight weeks. And that's the message that I want to give you with this because uh, it's not going to be straightforward. I can do parallel bid and not. So what we have done here is to the maximum, to the maximum, uh, I, I, uh, I have pulled, because team has built a slide deck, but I thought let's be human um, and let's do, how would I read the tender document and what are the key points that I would like to point out to my board uh, on this tender document, to my team on the tender document, and let's just do it that way. And that's this whole document here. The shading and other things is the way how I operate. And if you manage to get one point, two point or something out of it, it's a bonus or it just it's just for me to to refresh and uh, give few other pointers that you can also take it to the board. So primarily, there are two key points is here, but I've also went through the other things. You know, I am now 
thinking the pricing and the schedule part um if there is enough interest more than happy to do a deep dive early next week because i wasn't able to do it because there are 52 <laughs> schedules um that schedules plus uh, the pricing metrics uh, which is slightly different to what it is i wasn't able to go as much as you want to but if there is enough interest uh you know at the very end i'll ask for it we will do an, one more deep dive on this uh, specifically early next week but for now let's just go through some of the principles please take notes um, because we we are, we will be uh, we will be sharing the recording only to the attendees who join today. Uh, plus uh, uh, the the template and the other things. What we thought was is we just thought uh, we'll put a price tag of ninety five pounds for this and we donate it on the Remembrance Day to the Royal British Legion because it's Remembrance Sunday. That small money um, will will just um, uh, will just help the colleagues uh, help the industry uh, because obviously if you read the document. Uh, armed forces covenant is is welcomed so this is a small part if that helps if you want to note this notes there is a small tag of 95 which you donate to the uh, remembrance sunday to the to the uh, armed forces that's it so a very quick uh, wrap around um, on this um, you know it's it's for central government but as you can clearly see the introduction of lot 0 uh, 1a 2a and 3a means um, a is not only catered for SMEs, but B, it also supports the likes of education and schools, um, education, uh, sorry, uh, schools and uh, and the local councils and colleges where you normally see the spend, uh, you know, spend never crosses more than a million, million and a half ish at max three million. So you can clearly see the framework on one end has got a lot of improvements from the previous iteration from the supplier side which i'll touch wherever i can comparing uh, the previous iteration to this one plus um, it also uh, kind of um, uh, improved from the buyer perspective as well point to note here is is a multi-supplier framework which means there is no rest cap on how many suppliers can enter on this so that's why we just want to go uh, bang on on this because 35 billion spend why 35 billion because many of the contracts that were outsourced in 2014-15 didn't come through on the 2018 iteration, which kind of put off some of the suppliers last time. But this time, there is a lot more that will come to framework. And plus, there is a lot more buyers who CCS is tapping into. Um, you know, I mean, like my point here is, is just to try to close the gaps and then share the messages on both sides. So point here is immediately after the framework, you have a call off, as you know, last time, um, once we bid for the stuff, then there is clarifications after side. Then immediately we have the HMRC bid. So be prepared and don't just think it's just a framework. There will be some call-offs that will be come out on, which will be coming to the buyer. So um, uh, here uh, the framework is for 48 months, uh, four years, um, starting April. And uh, as he pointed, this last time it was three lots. Now it's nine lots. So, and also last time it was total contract value. Now it's annual contract value. So it might be much more accommodative to the other public bodies who procure that way. So uh, you, you know this already, refresh this, take notes um, if you prefer. So uh, first one is FM, TFM, the lot two is hard FM and lot three is soft FM. So uh, it helps the cleaning security companies to go for it. But still, uh, when we touch the mandatory and the optional services, it's not as straightforward. But again, from commercial services is not one entity trying to buy it for themselves. They're buying it. They need to make it standardized so that it could be preferable model for others. So there will be some generic content and there is generic content here. Um, but hopefully the call off will be much more specific than this. But from last iteration, this iteration, I personally think there is there are some great improvements on this. So, so decide your lots, but, but I will touch some interesting points. Um, so TFM is lot one um, and uh, hard FM is lot two and soft FM is lot three. So um, even though you could, there, uh, as it says, there is multi framework contract. So what that means is there is no cap. So in each of those lots, there is no cap on the individual um, suppliers who could be in these lots as well. Having said that, so, uh, uh, you know, you uh, 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 pretty much rather than me trying to second guess, I've just written exactly what's written. You can submit all of the lots. However, please note that if you're successful on all lots, you will be restricted from being awarded a place on not more than two of the three lots per lot, which means 
it's going to be TFM hard FM or TFM soft FM or hard FM soft FM. So uh, I know last time <laughs> pretty much the, most of the tier one suppliers, they used a different legal entity to bid to enter different lots. Uh, just to let you know, uh, if you plan to do this this time, which I wouldn't recommend, pick your lots, uh, you might be excluded. So I, the last thing you want to do that is uh, the legal entity um, that uh, that you pitched for, say, hard FM, soft FM, and uh, then but you are a hard FM company. Just in case you you just added soft FM with your partners, but if you want you want to be part of TFM hard FM, imagine if the if the entity that you wanted to get in strike is being striked off. Uh, which is TFM hard FM and only hard FM soft FM, which is the sub subsidiary that you try to enter just so that you, you, you are not missing out on opportunities is the one that goes in. Just be beware of this because CCS is absolutely aware of this. So when you are designed to go for it, uh, you know, go for 80-20. Where, where do you think 80% of your opportunity is going to be and choose those lots. In. So you don't want surprises halfway through and then said, oh, sorry, you can only do pick two, um, you know, so, um, and there is only one legal entity that you could go for as well. This is after contract. So we don't want that thingy. So just keep that in mind. So timelines, um, as you go for the timelines, it's very interesting. Um, clarification questions. Now, I've, I've gone back to the very basics because we are bid for, for different organizations. I a bid for myself for when I was the strategy director. Uh, with, a friend, with a few friends here, you know who you are. 2018, we bid again with the two organizations, then FDES, then um, Estates Framework, uh, you name it, um, then Accommodation Framework. We pretty much did all the bids. So if you have experience on these things, there is nothing um, unusual, standard stuff is standard stuff, and then you will know the other things. But either way here, please do uh, please do keep a note of this. I know you might have already done this, but let me revisit. Uh, the tender came in, say, Monday. Um, so, uh, and but then you have the clarification questions, which is 22nd. So, assuming it came in Monday, say it's 1st of November, the tender goes in on the 4th of January. You might be thinking you have an eight week window uh, with the 10 day break for Christmas, uh, because again, big team. Uh, might need to work around it. It's, it's unfortunate. Um, it's not fair, but it is what it is. But you have your governance and you have other things. But even before that, people who know clarifications last time, there were 960 clarification that was received within first two weeks of the procurement. So today we are in uh, 4th of November. So by 22nd of November, most probably, remember that for three lots, today we have nine lots. And there are a lot more suppliers who will be bidding whether they continue to submit, especially on the SMEs is a question mark, but there will be questions. So the challenge there is they have, you know, I'm sure CCS will be prepared uh, because last time was it was the first attempt that they went with this with the square meter pricing. But this time, most probably they'll be prepared. But just just give yourself that that uh, that risk mitigation, whatever you call it, in your bid time scale that until 22nd of November, you know, when the bid deadline comes up, you will deadline for clarification is only 6th of December, which means if 17th or, uh, you know, if, if the Christmas break, uh, say, for example, if everybody closes on the 23rd, which is the Thursday, which is the last day, then you have close to three weeks to revise your pricing, revise your quality submission, uh, revise anything and everything, take it to your board before Christmas, get it approved, and then use the Christmas break to write, price, finalize it. One more approval just before submission on the second or third, and then submit it. So you don't have eight weeks. You might have three weeks. So be prepared for that. And uh, so as soon as that's the reason for this webinar and there's many things, if you have any questions, please do ask it straight away. And I'm sure um, CCS will be not waiting until 22nd. Most probably they'll be coming early on within 24, 30, 36 hours to just answer more and more. So what that means is, will the procurement be delayed? <laughs> um, I, 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 I don't know, uh, but uh, 
it depends on the amount of questions it depends on the stress that the suppliers are going to go through but certain elements um, regardless of the framework is only quality and pricing but there are certain elements we all know uh, will not change so which which we can work on it and not everything will impact um, the pricing as well which i'll touch it gradually so what you can do between now and november uh, which is not going to change now and end of november and what are the clarification questions that might impact your pricing and things so work accordingly resource accordingly so that you are at the right place so as i mentioned here um, you know use the eso e, e sourcing tool and to do that but last time there was some issues where uh, actions log uh, if i don't know whether you you <laughs> you remember that some responses were in the website some responses were in in a different portal the e sourcing portal so it became a full time job for the teams just to understand hey where is the clarification response to what what that document revised document remember there is already a lot of documents that's been uploaded the revised documents if it gets uploaded where is it uploaded so you need to have a hands on a hands on bit manager bit coordinator on this pretty much full time who might not even be um you know writing the bed but managing this workflow managing this input sharing with his inputs etc please do prepared for that and because when things move on the other side it it have a knock on impact on your quality submission and knock on impact on your pricing assumptions and so on. so so it will be admin heavy uh, to monitor the change sharing to the wider team then updating it asking any further questions documenting it bringing it back and so on. so i am i'm just repeating what you already know but i'm just reminding you uh because this might come again because it, it that happened 4 years ago so <laughs> it's coming back because this is not something so bid submission deadline 4th of january as you know this is over christmas period um so not everybody with the current covid climate not everybody is there uh, like as they used to do working 5 days a week trying to fix it 2 to 3 days a week in office you understand the logistics your war room your bid room how do you have a microsoft team set up and other things it will be slightly different planet who's available who's not available i'm just i'm just talking through as if i am doing this bit but you know it, it just goes on so will there be delays i don't know but uh, last time there were a few weeks delays um but this time most probably there would not be but uh, considering the framework has to go live somewhere between april to june or april 20th is what they mentioned there uh you know he, there might be one or two weeks but i'm i'm nobody to second guess it but be prepared there is 3 weeks from now to clarification and from the time they answer the question you have 3 weeks that's what the message that i want to land here um so new suppliers it might be it might be a total shock for you but the old suppliers you might be thinking hey we have been doing this for some time so we know what we are doing so that's perfect mm -hmm. remember we know uh, from our side uh, there is at least uh, 11 public sector bids in local government in nhs in in other things that's happening around it if you're an organization which is structured public and private so your public team also bid for this and there is also some private bids if you're one organization who bid both private and public just be just be careful because don't allocate your resources to work on parallel bids um because it is this this is going to take a lot more resources than you anticipate and um and, uh, and this doesn't end uh, just on the big submission deadline as well as you know there is a clarification stage after submission then comes um, you know then you need to be prepared with all the certificates and other things if you are shortlisted for a go live on the 20th then you will immediately have one or two call off contract so be prepared if there is a possibility think it through whether you need to create a framework team uh, for the next 6 months um or at least one person who keeps an eye on it on an ongoing basis so it's there so the challenge is sometimes once you submit a bid um you know you just forget it <laughs> there could be there could be some messages in the e sourcing portal because we all moved on last time i know so many people missed out on um, on on sharing their uh, responses to the question because it happened later because you could also be losing some points or losing your submission on that but either way it is what it is so eight as the award notice and uh, framework goes live on the 20th of april so what that means is ccs has 
close to eight weeks themselves to actually evaluate it. So that's why uh, if, if it gets delayed by one or two weeks, or uh, it won't be delayed any further. But I don't think it will be delayed. But just don't think it will be delayed because they only have eight to 10 weeks themselves to make this tender work. So think it through carefully, resource accordingly. Um, and also immediately after the call off, that could be it's immediately after the go live that could be call off contract. So also do that. So that's the on the timeline part. If there is any questions on this, please do add a message in the chat because I don't want to talk to myself. <laughs> it will be good to have some conversations as we go on as well. So have some questions within among yourself. What the questions I need to ask to my team, my board, request budget, request resources. Uh, how am I going to plan my time? I'm a group sales director. I am, you know, I run the bed. How am I going to dedicate my this? I also going to, what sort of governance do I need to set up? What dates do I need to set up? Who do we need to be involved? What are the subject matter experts who need to be involved? We'll touch the big team at the very end. Um, but as I told you, I haven't gone deeper on the service schedules um, and, and the pricing as much as they want to. But next week, if there is an opportunity, if there is an interest, we can go deep dive. So you could also see, the additional resources that you might need to require on this. But that's the timeline part. Key part is don't underestimate the clarification cycle that might impact your overall timeline. It's not like you start today. Having said that, there are some easy quick wins that you could go, which once you start the quality threshold and the submission, you will start to know that. So quality threshold. Uh, good news is this time, uh, you know, both the quality and the pricing thresholds are different. Um, which is unique uh, to the submission. So what we have here is, you know, you need to score 24 out of 60, and there are five sections um, around it, and we'll touch each of those sections. So 24 out of 60, and that's split in two parts, section A and section B. Um, section A is what they call the core service requirements, and uh, section B is a mandatory question. So if you're bidding for more than one lot, the questions in section B only need to be completed once. So which means if you're bidding for two lots, three lots, good news is you only have to do it once. So, uh, and again, not all the sections in those uh, in those mandatory section B questions are have the same thing, but let's just go through one at a time so that you know what you're doing. But there is a point here, key point here, I'll just read it exactly. So if you have received zero for any of the quality questions, or if you have not met a minimum weighted quality score of 24 out of 60, we will reject your bid and you will be excluded from the competition, which means um, you need to have a minimum score in each of the question and you need to have an overall minimum score for the quality section as a whole. So plan it accordingly. So what are the things in the uh, service requirements section A, you have what we call the compliance, which is pass or fail questions. Then there are two other questions which you do need to fill out with additional services. Hey, is there anything I know we captured all the services in it, mandatory, optional. Is there anything else that you could do for the central government listed there, but it's not evaluated. Geography coverage as well, because again, for the call of contracts, as you know, there is a push on local suppliers trying to get most of the local contracts. Um, you know, so uh, it's uh, if you if you operate in a region and if you prefer to work on a region, this is where you go. You go more, but most of your national providers, so that's it's you can stay with this. But again, some sections have to be filled, but these sections, anyway. So, this is where you can start to slowly plan your resourcing. Okay, um, am I going to have a bid writer? Am I going to have a bid coordinator? Am I going to have two bid writers, two bid coordinators, etc.? Because you just need to plan your quick wins. Who is going to do this section on additional requirements and geography coverage? Test it, dust it, close it because there is no impact on because it's not evaluated you can ask all the questions on clarifications update it etc but if that's a quick win find the quick win pass fail questions and do focus on these um, one big thing which i would like to share is when you're answering section b don't just think that you are answering it just for the framework <clears throat> Um, having listened to the CCS webinars myself, or you know, these become a planning exercises. You know that COP twenty six net zero summit went on. So the 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 submissions or the planning, most of the stuff you you will need to come out with a say a social value plan. What are you going to do for these? Things? We will touch those things 
Next. But just as an example, I'm telling you, what's your continuous improvement and innovation plan? What's your social value plan? What's your net zero plan, etc.? You need to go back and share your quarterly update to CCS because CCS, as you can clearly see, will not be just be doing the project and passing on to call off. And so they will start to, as you know, if, if UK is uh, it has a set target becoming net zero as a country, somebody needs to monitor what's how much of the central government is moving in the direction. And that work is done by you. Obviously, that means the metrics that you that the more detailed you go with that, uh, you plan it through how we are going to approach it and collectively as an organization that will be measured as well. So there, as you can see, there is a section which we will touch. I mean, there is this charge that will be incurred. Um, so there will be a few hidden costs. But in your case, it's not just you are entering all the good stuff to get into the framework. Please be prepared that it will be monitored and it will also be reported. So when you look carefully on this, five sections as we talked about first one is continuous improvement and innovation what content it comes next but look at it as principle these are the key sections that you need to go for in addition to the service questionnaire and other things which will come so 15 percent 8000 characters split up into four sections so that's 2000 characters there is no work for your designer in this bit people who are familiar with the ccs framework you know you go to e sourcing portal you just add the content there uh, but um, so don't put a lot of a um, lot of time and effort on creating something amazing on continuous improvement social value impact etc it's more numbers and facts and other things um, how you are going to achieve it's going to help but there could be some um, some attachments but no other attachments is allowed other than what they specifically asked for so if there is a space where you could you could you prove it in a graphical way you might need to look for it but i haven't logged into e sourcing portal myself and checked it but that's something that uh, that leave it to you the point here is in the continuous improvement section it's 15 percent 8000 characters four sections in it that's it so 2000 characters each so the way it works is, is a 50 mark so you need to you are you are rated score out of 60 because that's an overall mark is nine marks so that section you need to score i don't know you know you, you aim for this is like an exam right i think if uh, what section can you push more what section you'll be getting less you need to know that you need to go to score a minimum score not zero in each of these things at the same time you need to know what maximum you could score on each of those sections so yes 100 percent, julian the question was uh from 30th september 2021 most public sector contracts over 5 million acv need a carbon reduction plan we assume this is relevant in rm6232 100 percent, it's relevant to rm6232 that's the point that i mentioned because your carbon reduction plan will be monitored measured and uh, they will be questioning it have you achieved it if not if that's great show us where if you haven't why not so these are the marks that you need to look for carefully. So, you know, and, and you can clearly see the way that they are scoring. It's, it's like 100%. You answered all four sections. Great. Um, uh, you only answered three sections. Great. So you scored 75. You answered two sections. Great. Or you answered all the sections in an average way. So you, you scored 25, 25. So the pointers are there in the evaluation guide, but I don't want to repeat everything there. So what you have here is Continuous improvement and, and innovation, social value, as expected, 25% sustainability between carbon net zero or uh, what we call the energy efficiency and also wastage. Um, you know, you have 50% there. Then you have the other things that split upon. How would you do call of contracts, mobilization, which is, as you know, you all have process methodology and stuff. And then you have the service delivery of managing the contract. So this is a standalone element if i were you i will give this to dedicated uh, people who can do it to ensure um, they ensure they get a first draft second draft third draft because regardless of uh, of of things you know you know some questions you know let me let, let me show the actual question so that you know what, what you're talking about so innovation for sections the parts that you need to split across is practical application how in a practical application of innovation how where did you practically apply remember case studies and stuff takes time you might have it but you need to make it punchy enough based on the service schedule for this client reduce costs and add value where have you demonstrated that reduce costs and add value 
show us how you collaborated to do that service delivery can use improvement you know pretty much as he told you all all of you are t1 suppliers <laughs> so you you might have written it to death but customize it as it is you can even go to a to a different aspect so you, you can split those questions if you want to score the maximum marks you can split those questions where there's not one person write this innovation section who's going to write the practical application one who's going to write the reduced cost and added value another person who's going to do collaboration remember these are unique 2000 characters so if one person writes it and then you cannot link one answer to the other these needs to be standalone with themselves so uh, split it up so there are five units here so the social value again apprenticeships what are you going to do with working with local suppliers? Are you employing any disadvantage, any people from the disadvantages community? And you are not just employing them. How have you given them work progression in, in your thing? So it's something that you need to write. It's something you need to measure. It's something that you need to prepare to continuously do. Sustainability, three sections. This is where, interestingly, sustainability section scoring is slightly different. Sustainability section scoring is actually higher than the other things, which means um, it's 33, 66, 100. It's only three sections. So, you know, that's where I think all of you, um, I believe, will score a lot more on that. So, reduce greenhouse emissions and carbon net zero planning and uh, reduce energy consumption and recycled waste. So, you can either do it yourself or you could ask for external help, um, you know, because there are lots of uh, people who are working on this. So prime, prime point here is split it up. And these two are related to your, your actual service delivery and the way you're going to mobilize it. This is unique to your own company, your way of operating. Knowledge of the public, again, uh, this is very interesting. I will touch it. Uh, last time there was only public sector contract. As you know, we have 300 slides on public sector contracts. We recently tried to uh, download that, you know, distill it into bytes by bytes. But even then it came to 300 slides. It's not something that's easy to digest, but then at the same time, the contracts are non-negotiable. You could ask questions about the contracts. It's in the contract today, but you are, you can't mark it up and say, we agree, we don't, you know, you, you can't negotiate. So it's very clear, typical CCS that, but that's how they, how they operate. And then uh, in addition to that, this year, they have accommodated NEC three and NEC four. So there are links which are which is which is there and there is it's 65 pounds, 62 pounds, 50. You could download those contracts as well and read what that means to you. If you if if you if you have enough time after reading other the 80 odd stuff that you need to read anyway. But again, uh, why it's important here is you are, you need to demonstrate your knowledge. Where have you uh, have run contracts with the NEC? NEC3 and NEC4, where have you done contracts with public sector, which means if you're already part of CCS, that would be a tick. Then uh, how do you ensure that over the lifetime of the contract, you keep the service delivery, you are, you are, you are, you are plans to achieve KPIs, how do you monitor progress, mitigate risk? Those are fairly straightforward. But again, considering individually it's 2000 characters, you need to go at least four different drafts versions on this. So it cannot be a fluffy, I'm sorry to use those words, but it cannot be a generic uh, response. Uh, please do. It needs to be very, very real to score the maximum because of the good news is you are not competing against each other. You are just competing against you on this tender. How much, what's the maximum score? Am I going to get it? Because everybody is a winner on this because everybody is going to enter the framework if you hit the score. It's not like only five will go through. Everybody's going through. So on that perspective, you don't need to worry much about the competition. You just need to worry more about, am I giving the best shot from the knowledge library? Do I have, if I don't have it, who do I need to go to get these information? And as you can see here, resourcing wise, plan it carefully. Uh, who is going to manage innovation response? Who is going to manage? If one person does it, believe me, I think your chances are not going to be as much as, as you want to go because maybe service delivery is one, mobilization is one, sustainability, 100% dedicated person, social value, dedicated person, innovation. And I say dedicated person is, um, let them focus on this one response alone because 20%, you know, 25% is that one, 25% is this. Um, and then uh, the rest of it's 15, 15, 10. So plan it accordingly, resource it, but that's where things are. So, uh, okay, perfect. So next one. 
Um, as I mentioned here, you do need to go and write the individual sections in these boxes. No attachments are permitted. Any additional documents submitted will be ignored. That's why I'm telling you um, rather than to I, again, there's an unfortunate situation. You might have that explained in a nice graphical way, uh, but it is what it is. I'm sorry. And so um, so we, we have to just go through this. So let me go. Um, right. So next is the pricing. Any questions so far on the quality side? Or oh, you had enough already <laughs> on a Thursday morning? Thank you. If you if you if we can, please do top up your coffee, keep going, um, and we'll just go from here. So pricing threshold. Um, so I, uh, as I'll raise my hand, I, I haven't done detailed pricing spreadsheet analysis on the individual lot one, two, three templates. Uh, again, if there is enough interest, uh, more than happy to have a look at it. And team have done a lot of work, but they have it in, uh, they, have, they have got 15 different um, slides. They have just digested it, put it in different parking. But I thought on this one, I'll have a go. So that's why you have all the shadings here. Apologies. So point here is, um, you know, there. You know, again, your price should compare with the quality of your offer. It's very interesting statement. But if you go and read the the actual submission or the spreadsheet, you're going to see uh, square meter pricing, hourly rates, and um, you know all all the other things. So this is where what's not mentioned here. You need to have a solution person, somebody who could digest the service schedule who could translate what that means to the estimator and somebody who can then take it and add it in, inside the overall thing because it's not a traditional bid you have most of you have already done it in the past you might have the experience but pricing hasn't changed vastly but the way the evaluation is done is changed which you will touch so but you know how much effort it takes on the pricing which i'll touch at the very end uh, because this is very very intense process and uh, uh, some uh, some uh, industry friends i know have started this in july this year uh, i will explain what they did so what happens here is remember you know you can approach pricing separately uh, but there will be a dot dot to uh, to other parts of the uh, uh, schedules and there will be a dot dot to the five sections that we just talked about so, for example, as a, just one one thing, you, you you wrote all these things about social value, right? But in in all these things, if you go and calculate it, uh, how much is the square meter price for ventilation, heating, etc.? So there is no price. You need to cost your social value. You need to cost your innovation. You need to cost your mobilization. Or are you going to cost your mobilization? Are you going to cost your social value? These are the interesting conversation you just need to go. But the advantage is this time is uh, the price that you're submitting is the maximum price you now so uh, so we will uh, we, we will look into that we will look into that so price submitted will be the maximum payable under this framework prices may be lowered at the call off stage so uh, <clears throat> it's a key point and be prepared you know yes at the outset it could be just filling a pricing template for those individual services but there could be uh, you might not be, I, I will touch it at the very end, you might not be delivering all these services. You, you might have a preferred suppliers who do that, or you might have subcontracted those things. You have to go back, ask quotes from these guys, which means you might need to do a mini tender among your own preferred suppliers to get these answers. And they might not be familiar in providing ventilation costs and square meter pricing. I know many of you might be laughing behind because I know that's the pain that you all went through last time and the pain continues, unfortunately. So uh, all court services must be praised on a standalone basis. So you must not add it like, you know, with this buy one, get one, if you get that one, 20% reduction and so and so. You must not price under, a, you, must, you must not underprice a court service with the view that the service can be delivered with another service line. So please price it as it is so that I'm sure it's, um, you know, it, it helps CCS on benchmarking because those poor people on the other side, if there are 60 suppliers who are bidding for it, they just need to somehow digest those information, put that like, you know, who's who's doing what, and then, then take it to the buyers for the call of etc. So, so point there, 
There is pricing matrix three, as you know, depending on the lot that you're going through, you just need to do that. And then finally, um, it's the once you have done it, you just need to upload into the sourcing portal. In fact, it's face value straightforward, but it's um, it could be challenging. So let me go through this. Uh, bidder submissions will be evaluated against other bidder submissions. So again, in the how to bid uh, part of the thing, they have, we have given lots of metrics. They've given lots of evaluation. I'm not going to go deeper on that. Either way, it's based on an optimal value. Um, so in the in the individual scoring elements in the tab, um, if you want, I can open the pricing metrics pretty quickly. Let me start a new share. Um, okay. So this is one of the pricing metrics. I hope you can see the screen now. So, um, so what is it? So this is it. So you have for each of those lots you have the template like this and the measures for individual service element is here um, obviously you 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 know you you cannot play with the spreadsheet and change any formulas or anything but as you can clearly see these are the different measurements that it goes through and then these are the different building types i will touch it in the commercial considerations the challenges behind these things and then uh, so because it's not for one site there's different things again it's the same as last time the same as last time the only thing is no it's based on optimal value which you'll touch so then there is uh, the additional thing that goes in there any variance so the, this is the fixed one uh, how much is it extra for london variance i know some of the colleagues had these challenges last time or pretty much the whole industry had it last time which is like hey i don't know if, if this is for a hospital in london or a commercial building in London versus it's in Manchester because price there is very very different or in Scotland etc. But now it's uh, it's been it's been constructed differently, but overall the template hasn't changed that much. So um, you have the evaluation here. This is the thing that you will need to go for, and then add uh, your inputs, square meter pricing for individual services, and uh, is a core service, which means you have to provide. That's the challenge. Uh, because SMEs will still find it slightly more intimidating, I think, because if they, they might not be able to do everything in it. But it is uh, it's there uh, from CCS perspective. They cannot make it too. Uh, I mean, like they cannot go too lower as well, because they already have nine lots, uh, but they, they can't do like 36 lots or something. But it's there. So look at these things again uh, one with overhead and profit one with a standard weighted percentage again with the different buildings as well so you will need to price it for different buildings for individual services so you can clearly see the impact this is going to have to an estimator a for example i need to do mechanical and electrical this is just a template that i took hard fm version one so lot 2a so if it's mechanical and electrical um i need to understand okay how, how much is it going to be for one building type then i just need to do the same thing for other building type map that out with the i don't know this uh, uh the 12 or 15 different services here with 13 that's 12 into 15 um close to 180 different cost permutations that you need to do to do this um, it's um so it's 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 very intense i think if you haven't um, done that before it's this and as you can clearly see every single cell here uh you know if if you have done it it will say conformant if you haven't done it non conformant this is a test it's a check that goes in there now, please don't underestimate the work that goes in here but let's just go back to the actual pricing so the uh, the point here, as you can see here, let, let's go and yeah, the evaluation is done there. Um, I did try to understand evaluation. I, I wrote notes somewhere, but please do please do take your time to understand how the how, how the evaluation works. So some sections, as you can clearly see for TFM, um, the number of separate scorable elements, as you can see, 66. So you need to add 66 inputs if you are bidding for TFM. In hard FM, it's 35. So collectively between TFM and hard FM, if you're going together, you need to go for 100 inputs. That's the thing that I look, look there. And then uh, if you're soft FM, that's 46. So the different scoring, uh, or if 100 marks is the maximum, and if you need to add the 66 inputs, it's flat line, which means every point is 0. 0.6. So and the overall thing is 40 marks that you need to score, and this is where your mark will be done. And again, um, a very interesting point here is uh, 
the marks will be awarded to each scoreable element based on the variance of each bid from the optimal bid value. So the optimal bid value, I don't know who will be that lucky company or um, it's, it's like, um, I know who will be able to come out with an optimum bid value. From experience, again, from running central government contracts or running other contracts uh, across the geography, um, if you have done this analysis, again, this is what companies started early on to just do the benchmarking of their own estates. Uh, take different examples like 100 buildings within their own portfolio in different regions, benchmark all these uh, services across what's the costing to find that optimal bid value and then decide what are the loaded costs that I need to add and then make a judgment whether I need to load it or not. It's, uh, it's, it's, um, it's, yeah, it's a step that you need to go through. That's it. So points of order to variances above uh, the optimal value are discounted by 30% in compared to equal and to below. So again, there is a thing there. So if you score somewhere in, in there, again, this is in how to bid section. I don't want to repeat the entire thing again, hence the, hence the thing there. So it's there. So you need to get this before it was like the cheapest. It's still the most economically advantageous than the principal, as you can expect. But this time it starts from a median value. So it's not the cheapest bid. It's an average bid. So what that means is if you are too cheap, you're going to lose mark. If you're going to be too expensive, you're going to lose mark. But it's not as bad as trying to undercut each other and trying to do whatever you are doing. So please do understand how the price evaluation works and then then see the impact of your quality score, which there's the five sections plus any other sections uh, on the service schedules to add it to your price. I have I will list a few pointers that you might need to consider later on in these things. Then what happens, uh, we will then rank all the final score from highest to lowest. Um, um, we know the rank from last time and you know the rank from last time. So it will be giving you a good hands on. But for the new bidders, uh, please don't underestimate the work it requires. You will you will not get it as a right or wrong answer. You know, it, it, it's it's just something. At some point, you'll you'll go with the gut feeling. Believe me, uh, this is it. So once the framework contract signs, then your price is binded, and then for the call of contracts, it just goes wherever it goes. So keep this in mind uh, because there are certain certificates. So now let's go back and uh, to, to the logistics again. If you want to go deep dive on pricing and the service schedules, more than happy early next week, we'll just sit down because the team has done the work, but I haven't put as much thoughts. So, but we can go through this so that in your mind, you could have the clarity and you could pass on to this, to the team. So the conclusion, um, you know, once your framework is done, you need to have these certificates. There is a slight challenge if you have a cyber essential certificate, you know, you, you, basic is a self-certification. There is a slight change. Any issued, uh, any certificate issued under the old scheme will expire, which is already expired by now. So just have a look at the validity of your of your cyber essentials because it could take up to eight weeks. So again, these are the things. The ones you are on a call of contract, you should demonstrate that you have all these things in here. Insurance certificates. Um, which is in, in questionnaire. Then you have the ISO for a lot. Again, this is only for the bigger contracts, uh, which is uh, uh, the 10 million plus ones or seven and a half million plus ones, the, the third ones. And the quality assurance, which is the old one and ISO. If you haven't got these certificates, now is the time to roll the ball because you are at the mercy of these certification bodies to just get these certificates. So evaluation criteria, we already talked about it. Most economically advantageous standard. 60 marks on the quality and the price is 40 marks. So um, the additional attachments. So now we saw the, we only saw the quality and the pricing part. You know, you, you might have already thinking, how am I going to allocate my resources? Because those are standalone. Selection questionnaire. Most of you might have already completed the selection questionnaire, but please, if you don't have try to push it through in the next two or three days because some of the certificates and stuff we don't have it's tough uh, apply and get on with it but this is a tick because only if you successfully pass the selection stage you will even proceed to the so-called award stage uh, which is as you know um, is what we talked about in in that section a and section b early on on the quality and pricing uh, a <clears throat> few more certificates that you need to collect here uh, you know this is a self certifications are you I, can you actually deliver this? You just go line by line. 
um, and you are required to submit completed certificates of technical ability for each lot you're bidding for to demonstrate your professional ability. You just go and say, yes, yes, we can provide us, yes, we can provide. You must get the customer to verify that the information you are provided is true and accurate. So, and the same thing with the past performance as well. You must request the buyer you have provided the relevant principal services as described in 2D uh, to complete this attachment. So these three things, you might be thinking they are straightforward, but this is another standalone piece, nothing to do with the uh, with the service questionnaires or nothing to do with the quality or pricing. You need to have someone to handle this carefully because uh, it's, it's not like getting a reference. It, it, any, any buyer whom you're going to go for, um, they need to vouch it. They need to sign it. They might do a, do a connection or your account person over there might not have the relevant authority to sign it. You might need to take it to his board. You know all these things over Christmas where that's going to take you. So to pull it out, take it as a separate thing and then see whether you could run it in parallel, immediate. These are the things which is not going to affect your clarification questions or most probably if um, um, if there's one or two, it won't, won't be, but otherwise it's fairly straightforward section. So between now and the 22nd, a service questionnaire certificates should be straight on in it because again, this is not different to any of the previous CCSFM frameworks that you're going forward. Uh, we already touched the geographical boundaries and additional services. Again, you know, not evaluated, but you still need to keep an eye on and complete it because if you don't complete it, then obviously you're not compliant. So price matrix you know you must complete the price matrix we already saw that but then comes uh, other things like you know if you are <sighs> this is uh, this is a biggie i mean like um, if uh, um how do you define a consortia you know there, there are definitions where um, are you going to work together as a, as a thing but most most of you will be going prime and then you might have subcontractors but does your subcontractors need to fill any of these things uh, it's something um, have a look and then if, if they need to fill it please do send it so that they also need to fill those things in there so these attachment four six and seven um, again it's a standalone piece of work um, if you if you overload as you can clearly see if you overload you can already build up the number of resources here my count is right you're already looking at the fourth person here uh, just on the big manager, big coordinator, you know, support side. But one one person tries to coordinate it, it's all good. But but uh, you know, considering the clarifications will be hitting on one side, um, you know, it's it's a challenge. So work it around. So these three things: subcontractor management, getting the things parallel, do it in parallel, and see who's dedicated and try to fill the forms, reach out to them, and do what it takes. Let alone the pricing. Frequently asked questions is a good one. I haven't listed it here. Uh, it, it's just uh, you feel free to go and read it over there. Guarantee resilience is a key one. And I because most of you are strategic suppliers already, most of you are already sharing enough information to Sir Cabinet Office and others. Uh, again, part of this, um, if there is any guarantee or anything that you might need to go for with your group companies, you know, they might need to plan it accordingly. So, so far, uh, what we have looked for is um, is is the contracts. Um, we haven't looked at the contracts yet, but what we have looked at it is um, the uh, the lots, the timelines, the quality submission, other tender documents that you need to go with this, and the pricing on a pretty high level. So now comes the <laughs> the widest schedules. Um, I, I know I, I know I know it's uh, it's challenging, but please do please do stick with me because it's uh, that's the whole reason uh, me and my team are doing this is just to give you in bite by chunks so that you could start to plan it. Otherwise, you will be overwhelmed with the with the other things. Uh, it's it's a general thing, you know. It's it's a collective for the for the whole industry. So these are the sections. So there are core terms. There are four four key elements. It's in attachment ten. Core terms, framework schedules, joint scheduled, call off schedules, and finally there is something called award forms. These are the other parts. So, legal. If uh, uh, again, uh, be, being a tier one, tier two supplier to the government, you will have a legal. But legal is a pretty, pretty, pretty intense commercial, and legal will be full on on this. And uh, um, because it's super important, it's not as you know, you can't mark up, you can't negotiate, but it's important to do this again. Um, the technical solution expert, technical SMEs, they also need to read the framework schedules and start. So the call of schedules at the moment, it's a, 
it, but this is uh, you know it's just principles in there which which is going to give you like how are we going to price the call off when it comes live on that so in addition to that remember that some buyers will also utilize not just the core terms but they will utilize these two which is the nec3 and nec4 um you know so that's it so primarily it's here it's the same thing um written here so what you have here is if you go deep dive on these four sections you're going to find 50 plus contracts 50 plus and uh, not all um again you know some i've just highlighted here uh, because uh, they, if you go and read the document you will know some are optional right? which even though they say nec3 and nec4 are optional you know part of the quality uh, quality um, sub submission you still need to uh, put your understanding of nec3 and 4 so i wouldn't take it as a as a kind of uh, you know uh, just take forward but again priority wise start with all the black ones here and then you have the blue ones which is like you know it's not mandate you know, the right word there is um, you know is it optional yes no um, these are being quoted as optional um, so again uh, you um, read it i haven't read it as it as it told you schedules I haven't gone deeper on this but if you want to these are the things so the black ones absolutely must the blue ones uh, are the optional part but this is where the interesting thing comes in you go and have a look at the pricing um this is a quick scan you go and have a look at the pricing um you know you you need to cost it based on how you're going to deliver the service if you are going to deliver the service you know you might have it from your experience in delivering similar in your previous building types in some of your other contracts or if you are subcontracted, you might need to give some specification to those guys to just get the quote in, then add with US margins, overheads, etc. I already told you that there is a quality impact on this, where uh, we, we have to look into uh, um, what's the social value, what's the mobilization, what's the other thing. In addition to that, these are some of the other things that you might need to think that might impact your pricing. Um, ICT services, continuous improvement, transparency reports, which you need to provide. Because remember, you, you, are, you are not walking away from bidding this. There is an ongoing cost to service this framework. And uh, these are some of the elements that I highlighted, uh, which you might need to, you know, even though they say 2P could be applicable, 2P might not be applicable at this stage because obviously you are not getting a straight contract now. But there is a 2P surcharge premium and other things, which was a topic, big topic last time, and it continues. But this time, CCS is very, uh, very kind to just said, hey, it could be applicable, but it's, it's up to you to just take a position on this. So these are some of the charges um, and the additional things that you might incur. Uh, whether you are going to add it in the pricing, um, you will need to take it with your board. So the NEC3, NEC4 contracts, the link is here uh, again. Um, there is a discount code that CCS has given. You could download it um, to get this, what they call EVU. The, uh, there are versions which are 700 pounds, 800 pounds for the entire organization, but the EVU only allows you to view. Um, then there's an e-print version and there is a print version as well. So but this discount gives you access only to EVU. Uh, I, I would suggest regardless, just have it. And then um, maybe it's, it's for your commercial and legal team. So these are all the attachments at this stage. So what you have here is, uh, you know, you have the attachments. Do your best to read uh, at least the must ones, or please don't miss out because there could be some pricing impact on this. And then there are some optional elements there as well. Armed Forces Covenant. I know most of you are Armed Forces Covenant, as you know. Even this presentation and the recording and the thing. We're going to donate, we're going to charge a nominal 95 pounds and we're going to donate it to armed forces part of the uh, other thing. So if you are, if you are uh, it's worth registering it because it's it just that pledge is important and the details have been provided there. So pricing. Uh, now come to the, the final few uh, pointers, uh, just so that you could start to see, hey, how am I going to structure my team? Uh, where, uh, you know, what support do I need and what, you know, and, and bits and pieces. So let's just go through. Point here is, uh, you know, Pricing impact framework schedule five. If you're awarded a framework contract, you will need to send us management information every month. We will use this information to calculate the management charges you must pay us for sales 
made through the framework most probably um, you know th there is a charge for the buyers and just uh, go and have a read as you know i haven't read it fully myself is there any charge that ccs will incur on the suppliers as well because you have been you know, got the sales from that so we don't think two people apply to this procurement at the framework this is the same copy message from from commercial services copyright uh but in your case uh, just see uh what you would like to do on that so framework compliance all the contract documents which are highlighted looking at the top end there will be some price impact uh, but there you know if uh, but reading it through you might find other sections that might also go for it don't underestimate the uh the other three parts which is on the quality side as a social value planning standalone net it's not just quality marks there might be some cost on delivering those services on behalf of ccs to the wider central government on the framework level in itself if you need to go through please do so um this is my personal view um so again um, whether uh, the, the industry will have its own view and i'm sure uh, people will be collecting it i'm sure bsa will do it as they did last time because we don't have an industry body as you know i've been banging on it for a long time now hence all these things uh so um, you know so i've already spoke to Gemma in bsa and uh, we have ifm who also is doing what they're doing so collectively if there is anything we can do we can do but the point here is you should need to be able to evidence all mandatory services for tier one tier two providers um you know you may be able to with some support from your subcontractors but for smes it's still becoming a challenge smes to collaborate to form jvs in order to they can demonstrate the capacity and capability time frame <laughs> as i told you if you look at it for the it will it will feel like eight weeks but it's not it's three weeks from three weeks to clarification submission then once they get the result, once you get the clarification response, it's three weeks from the clarification response to submission in between you have Christmas New Year. So if you if you are look at the mandatory services now, go please do that's uh, that's another work. Um, go through all the you know it's in how to bid section and it's also in all the schedules. Look and, and the pricing as well. Quick activity. Where am I gonna? self deliver where am i going to subcontract if i'm going to subcontract for whom am i going to subcontract and then have the contact your procurement your procurement is, is going to play a key role and um, this is where you're going to find some massive differences in companies that traditional procurement versus bid support procurement you know so some people who are part of uh, i know in some companies procurement there is a dedicated person who helps to collect costs from the suppliers to the bidding team in some companies it's pure play procurement and you're going to have very interesting conversation with the procurement team on this if you haven't done this bids before so also now things have been changed now is the time to also go back and see solution wise so far i've been self-delivering this is it time to subcontract it so far i've been subcontracting it shall i self-deliver it then you map that up to social value oh my god price wise all great for me to deliver self but when it comes to social value, I might need to share it to some of the suppliers, but I, I may not, but that might not be making uh, price effective for me. So it's, a, it's an interesting dilemma between subcontracting and um, uh, what you call self-delivery and you map that overlay that with social value, how that's going to take it through. That, that, that's your call, how you're going to make it, but it's intensive and that's where the big director comes to the picture whose commercial background will make a massive difference ccs experience even more massive difference and uh, and that comes on with it so um so there's no mechanism to insert the costs related to this as as he told you but uh you know that's something you can we can check in the clarification stage or or, or uh, other things but it, it may be nice to have something in there so um from my personal perspective the template is far improved and the evaluation methods for malleur iteration where it was the cheapest bid uh, but still the variables are there you know it's um, to you know there is lots of ifs in it to come out an accurate value but most of you has gone through the pain last time so you know what is it you you have got the scores from last time you already won the call of contract from last time you know the lessons from that only you know i think we supported four companies last time and you know it's um, and, and 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 everybody has a different learning it's it's not an easy it's not an easy thing it could the price could be underpriced or overpriced as i told you but i'm super curious who is going to get that optimal value thing and i would love to interview you to to understand how you crack that so building types 
these are the building types. Um, <clears throat> so building types, there are 13 different building types, standard, it's, it's there in, uh, in, the, in the pricing sheet. You will need to have at least one example within your contract to do this. Again, not everybody, if you are new to public sector, <clears throat> then that's going to be, uh, then you need to find ways to look at your current estates. And Remember, this is not just call center operations here. This is this could be a call center operation in London or in Scotland or in Wales or anywhere, right? So that's a permutation. So there is three permutation. One is the geography, two is the service, and the third is the building type. When you mix all these three things, you get a multitude of uh, values. Then you need to pick and mix what value you're going to pick it in that square meter price. So it's very interesting. Um, again, um, you know, considering soft FM, you know, hospital cleaning now with COVID and stuff uh, will be much more intense. The square meter price for that will be higher. Uh, but the good news is the pricing now uh, is has now been also been marked as you clearly see for different building types, which means you can now add it before it wasn't. So it, it was great. So a price evaluation, again, it's optimal value. So challenges how you can get the price on the right on the button. This is where the data analysis is key. From the procurement, you need to build up a cost book, uh, which is, uh, this is the cost of services in these contracts that I have. Uh, this is the cost from the suppliers. This is the template. You know, we have created 15, not just this, we even have a standard uh, pricing model that we created for this. It's in our portal and we, we, design, and we designed that for the SMEs. Um, so that it's much easier for them to just say, okay, you know what, if you plug this information, the other information will go say subcontract uh, self delivery. And these are the other assumptions that you can go for that it automatically populates the other one. It's there in our portal, uh, but um, you might, you have your, your own dedicated model, just plan it accordingly and then do it. Each building type will be analyzed separately. As you know, there are 13 building types. It's essential to go deep dive financial reviews, on as many of your existing contracts as i told you if you pick just six examples that's 16 to 13 78 you know so um it's um it's what it is so um yeah so the rates will then be analyzed on an individual basis but this is where it gets interesting why can't you have a person in your company who act as ccs who could say, hey, use this as an operational efficiency exercise. I know whether three weeks, four weeks, you can do it. That's why some companies start slightly early on, but still it's not late. Or appoint somebody, a neutral person who could become the CCS version for you. And that's it, here we go, this is it. This work that you are collectively doing might have a massive boost on the way you run your contracts in so many places. Why is it climate meter price in Croydon University Hospital different to Croydon Council? same area two different building types it is what it is what's missing there um, or two different regions what's missing there is there anything that you could learn and apply you are going to get some some golden nuggets from this exercise again somebody lead this not just big team you might need to have someone ex someone within your team or uh, external or anybody to have these operations come out with these things past experience to make it happen the the unit of measure and um, not always square meter, hourly rate or, uh, you know, BIA rates, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so as you know, you might be used to go having an asset list and doing that again. Ev most of you are done the, have done the bits before. Um, it's the same. Uh, but for new providers, you, if you are waiting for an asset list to come uh, tough, <laughs> I don't think it will come. So uh, commercial thing. And again, um, this is a point I already mentioned, just as a simple example, right? While I was looking into some of the services, I haven't gone deep dive, but just some of the services, uh, you may self-deliver some of these or outsource some of this. Um, <laughs> some services you may you may have not quoted for before, in, in which case you have to source new suppliers quickly. So your procurement uh, might ask you to fill a form, then they go back to a market exercise two, three weeks, they might do something. You don't have time for those things. So who is it going to, to understand the timeline thing? Who's going to help you to do this? And, um, and you know, it could be CAPM, it could be help desk, it could be something that you can do yourself. But there could be certain elements that you always go elsewhere. You know, so this is where a dedicated person to do the building types, to do it, plus 
the procurement, other things, you might need to have someone else to just very quickly look into that. I need to get all these quotes. You, you are not going to, you need to educate them first of all, because these are things that they might not have done it in the past, because they might not be your supply chain, as I mentioned here, might be not be familiar in this type of thing. So they might need to go back and price that services in the new format. And you have to then go back and ask them how you have done it. So, you know, all these things, you know, I'm just putting it to your mind. So finally, um, you know, few parts, the cyber essentials don't underestimate the time. If, if you have, if you need to refresh that, it could go up to eight weeks. So go for it, add it and see uh, what you need to go for. The challenges, as I told you, there is a lot of, in a traditional bid, you do go for assumptions, your commercial assumptions, pricing assumptions, you know, quality assumptions, you name it. Uh, but in this case, there is no assumptions. You, all your assumptions needs to be within you. And then you just need to confirm, okay, at what point are you going to take risk? What point do you want to add, load the cost? And then do it. But at least document those assumptions within your log. Highlight the risk so that your board, again, this is a standalone work in itself, as you can imagine. Uh, this is what the quality guys have written, which is great. This is what the legal has got it from the contracts. This is what the pricing submission looks like now, bringing it all together. That's your commercial person. So that's it. So we are doing that. Um, so that's the point. Um, yeah, let's move on. Looking at the time, I'm surprised it's still going on. Okay, fine. So uh, again, you know, so far, guys, you know, the RM three eight three zero, RM six eight three zero, three eight three zero. Sorry, I'm losing my mind. Um, so the previous bidders, two thousand eighteen bidders, you know what you're doing. Uh, but again, this is the same thing in steroid. Um, just over Christmas period. Um, last time you, you have done things, but now let's just, um, you know, if there is anything that we can do to improve, um, if there is the opportunity to improve, but for new bidders, yes, this is not your traditional bid. This is not, there's no, there won't be clarity on 2P, there won't be clarity on assets, there won't be clarity on anything. This is a framework. Um, so if you haven't done frameworks before, that's why we have been doing all this webinars in September, in May, July, <laughs> just so that be prepared it's coming because 35 billion because if you are in it all the opportunities will only be coming to the framework suppliers and because there is no cap on this we want everybody to benefit out of it uh but still there is hope um that's it but again t's and c's a quick read uh lot 1a 2a 3a um it's it's a simple t's and c's on that perspective um uh, compared to uh, colleagues who are bidding for or industries who are bidding for the bigger versions the other ones um always um, you know there, there are there, there are a few things as you can clearly see how the life cycle thing works because yesterday cop 26 there is a new policy uk is going to be carbon net zero and xy date etc these things will all be passed through you in the next couple years or something so this to changing law um you know benchmarking of pricing the general price and payments you know liability caps life cycle terminations as you can see covid um, you know, there were close to 1,400 FM contracts was, was terminated just in 2020 alone. And, and it came out in very different form. Um, so what that means is there is, there is a chance, uh, uh, you know, even today morning, you might have read uh, Circo gave a parts contract, for example. So it's, it's real. So don't, yes, it's intense on the quality side, pricing side, selection questionnaire, insurance certificates, um, and uh, anything else building types etc but this is also real on the terms so again now you know how the clarification is going to go why there was 960 clarification within first two weeks it's all going to come so few reminding pointers um you know analyze your building types minimum sample size at least by based on the services and geography decide whether it be subcontracted you that's a dedicated standalone work so your pricing person might shouldn't be involved on this um it's an it's an additional estimator this is from my opinion from my experiences <laughs> you might be short of resources but you know the intensity of the work i'm just giving you the thing it's so a hard for a uh, hard fm uh, so just a simple example because i picked up hard fm the other one you know how much are you spending on comp and reactive you know across your estates just go for that uh you know this is uh this is a disclaimer again <laughs> you know if um, how much of the pricing will be impacted by actually by your operational solution you know for our, our rule of thumb it's always 20 percent 
because you have got your standard costs of operating. You, you would have done this for a very long time. I've looked at the list of attendees. You've done very little, you know your price. It won't be terribly, terribly wrong, but it's that additional 20% of your operational impact specific for this that you need to go. So again, that's a little tip, uh, but it might not be a tip, um, <laughs> but just, just plan it accordingly. So your team structure at the very minimum, somebody who's very, somebody who has done CCS, which is a gold. If you have this, please keep the person close because that's a, that's a very, very uh, unique skill set because a generic big director might find it more challenging. So then if it's, uh, then you need to have a hand on big manager who could, as you can see the work streams, I haven't created a chart of big team because I don't want to dictate things, but you know where that goes. Who is going to do the service questionnaire part? Who's, who's going to do the service questionnaire part? Who's just going to do that um, certificates and um, and the other section? Who's going to do the quality? Do I need four or five people or two or three people to focus on this? Because that's where 60% is going to come. The building part, who's going to do the pricing, the estimating templates? And then comes uh, then comes the legals, then comes the solutioning, then comes the supply chain, and, and you name it. There will be HR, there will be IT, uh, and there will be some other elements that you need to go for as well. So, and please don't think this is a part-time role and I can balance it. Uh, it will be very stressful because, again, that's something that you might need to manage your team carefully, especially if they are going to work through our Christmas, New Year, because it's been hard for most of us for two years. Uh, it's uh, depending on the lots that you're going as well, your team size might vary. Then you might need to consider additional estimator, or you might need to consider additional bid person, you might need to consider additional reviewer. But in any case, I think uh, whether it's internal reviewer as, as uh, external in here, it's not just like uh, go somebody external to do it. External could very well be somebody within your company or some two or three people in a company who can help you in benchmarking the pricing, reviewing the quality, etc. Um, you know, but external uh, who has got CCSFM framework, more than happy, um, you know, we can help you on that. But um, on this, the additional support again, look at it from the other side. How you are going to how you are going to structure it? This is your dedicated big team. Who is going to do the quality only? Who is going to do the compliance sections? Because you need to have a selection questionnaire. You need to have certain certificates in place you know, and all these things and references. That's a biggie. The pricing, pricing templates only and which lots. The review only. Who is going to do just the reviews to keep it going so that you move from 25 to 50, 50 to 75, 75 to 100. Then the logistics of involving across multiple lots now is the time to test your resources so from my point um you know if there was a good market engagement from ccs uh, from the very beginning i mean like it is uh, it's this and then uh, um and then um some people thought i i i even went on to do it for ccs no it we did it voluntarily just so that we had enough people in the framework at the same time all the hard work that ccs has done um because of the way they are structured wasn't um, we, we thought we'll be a vehicle we raised our hand and we just did it voluntarily and the same thing that we are doing today nobody asked us to do this and we continue to do this um so that's the disclaimer and caveat nothing to do with ccs it's just me and us who just do it um just to help our community so, so framework has vastly improved uh, but the challenge is obviously this is a framework right and this will be uh, used by a multitude of suppliers so there is some level of uh, generalization commoditization that's there, but that's that cannot be that, that cannot be foregone. But from three lots to nine lots, from to optimal pricing, I think CCS has done a great job on this. But it's just step forward. Maybe next side social value, next zero new quality sixty price forty. You know, it's a positive journey from what they have done. But I appreciate it's a much complicated <laughs> beast, <laughs> and uh, and be prepared. It's not just the bid. And once you submit the bid, there will be clarification after the clarification. Immediately, you might get a call off. A um, few pointers that's uh, I don't forget the clarification stage between now, ask any questions immediately, set your team. If you haven't done the kickoff, do it. And then digest all these questions. That's the whole point of this for me to demystify so that it's helpful for you to take it to your team, demystify, and then take it to your team, collect the clarification. Early CCS gets it, early they could respond, and early you could start to do this, um, you know, to price and to change things.
from our side um i think that these are some of the requests that came from the industry one is can we do a one day detailed workshop so that we all know what we need to do that's one um then it's just the general reviews uh, on the quality and pricing we can help you to take there uh, this is an interesting one we have created an elite accelerator which is what we have done is we have sliced and diced the entire contract schedules in bite size in our portal i wasn't involved the team did a great job on that in the portal um and then the plan is um, we just give it to the SMEs so that they can start to do things in their own thing. Then weekly we have calls with them to just coach them. It will be on a group level, um, on a coach with them, and it's like four thousand five hundred pounds. Um, you know, so they have access to the portal, group level over the six to eight weeks time. And then um, if they want to have one to one additional calls, it's nine thousand five hundred something like that. It just it's just there. Otherwise, it's there. You know, if you want hands-on support on the bed or on demand, that's there. So, you know, some of the works we have done, it's it, this doesn't come quickly, right? You just build the expertise gradually. What do you learn from 2015? What do you learn in 2018? What do you learn from the defense that came out of that? The training estate um, is the same estate framework. Then the net zero social value assessments, you know, again, that could be a standalone interesting piece as well, which is like, how can it be possible? We have one or two policy colleagues who joined us to help us on this, who's just specialized on this. So I've created this net zero. How, how can we stress this, this, et cetera? Next week for us uh, is the accelerator launch, um, where you know this is all the thing that I talked about, uh, the 30 day, 30 day reboot, all these things. This is just for SMEs, just we have sliced and diced it, make it user friendly for them. Because people who have registered, we just want at least, um, you know, and not at least, you know ask many people to go through this framework on the SMEs level um, because as you know on your side it's you can it's only two lots most probably will go for the top top two tier lots but the SME at that light we don't want anybody not to be present there so that's the thing that we are going to do here if you know any SMEs within your supply chain who's thinking to enter this please do pass it to our way and we'll just see what we can do so resources and templates is there so next week, if there is enough interest, I'll request the team to send a note out. Um, or maybe you could put in the chat box if uh, uh, maybe Monday or Tuesday next week, if you are, if you would like to go deep dive on the pricing matrix and service schedule, you're more than happy to do that. So uh, let me know in the chat box uh, of number one for yes. And if you haven't pressed it, um, I just say you're not interested. And uh, that means you could get on with it. So. If you're interested, just press one in the chat so that I know I could get a feel for it before I put my heads down this weekend um, to just create something useful for you. So this recording and uh, the download, and we are going to donate it to uh, the uh, to uh, British Legion. So the recording is there, but if you wanted notes and stuff, it's, it's a small fee. We just thought, no, let's do something for the society. Uh, that's about it. So any questions, anything? Um, looks like there's not much interest on the pricing matrix and service schedule. It also gives me time. <laughs> so thank you for joining. Uh, any questions, please do add it in the chat box. But this is a little attempt. Uh, please, as a disclaimer again, ZCS has involved it. We are just doing it just so that I know you have multiple bids. Try to take your mind off. Try to focus on this in the coming weeks. If there is anything that we can do to help, we are there to help. This is just a simple attempt from our side. But um, good luck with everything. I think we are seven minutes early, uh, five minutes, seven minutes early. Grab your coffee again and, and get on with it. Is there anything else that I would, if you want any further questions, you have my detail and uh, more than happy. I'll, I'll request team to uh, send a uh, um, uh, send a note out um, to everybody if, if there is an additional session that you need on the pricing and the service schedules and the other things more than happy to do that that's it from me thank you so much look after yourself and uh, stay healthy and happy diwali thank you